SAT math August is super close and if you want to get above a 700 before you take that exam pay attention to this video So here are some great math tricks I'm gonna tell you guys that you can implement literally today in your study regime your practice test your practice problems your Khan Academy practice or your actual SAT math exam when it comes so that you can get the highest score possible trick number one we're not wasting any time elimination three trick this is more of a mindset trick and this is basically where you use your choices to guide you it's like doing a problem the reverse way so college board on the math section is gonna be four choices right as it always does <clears throat> One is usually a trap answer and two are, you know, one other choice is like definitely wrong and two choices are usually similar. The best way to solve these types of problems, right, and mess up college boards plan completely is to, as you do the problem, right, let's say you do step number one, you want to look at the choices, see if you eliminate anything. Then you step number two and three. Usually by step two and three, you're able to eliminate two choices. So boom, let's say you eliminate A and D. And step number four, you eliminate C because it lets you know that the answer has to be positive and number C is negative, right? So like, okay, choice C can't be it because it's negative and X has to be positive. So as a result, you're left with B. And let's say the question was asking you what does x equal but you already know that since x is positive it has to be above 100 the only choice b works you just eliminate three choices one is left as a result that choice is the answer because one choice has to be correct and if you eliminate three that fourth choice is right and this is a great way of solving st math problems quick because it basically allows you to solve the problem without doing all the math you don't have to do all the work you can literally do 30 to 50 percent of the work and get the right answer if you follow this trick the last students what they do is they end up doing all the math all the algebra to spend like two three minutes doing all the math from top to bottom and then they get at the final answer let's say x equals 200 and then oh that's choice b but the student who does things by eliminating each choice as they do each step of math they're able to arrive at the choice b being the answer much faster and they're able to move on much faster these students are the ones getting that 750 to 800 on the math exam the math word problems are probably one of like the harder parts of the math exam and i know Khan Academy does a great job of giving you st math word problems are like super long and super complicated they have a bunch of moving parts you're like oh my god it's so complicated one of the best tricks i would say is to skip all the sentences and read the last sentence of the math problem first because the last sentence is usually what tells you what you're trying to find and that kind of narrows down everything for you so now as you read like the beginning lines you know what to pay attention to what everything means and you already know your end goal so this information you're reading you can assess all right i don't need to keep this in mind this i won't, I won't need to keep in mind this i won't need to keep in mind it's gonna help a lot a real example of this was i think on st practice test two or four there was a problem where the last sentence said what's the y-intercept right and the first sentence gave you the linear equations like 12x plus 8 so right there you know no eight's the answer but in between that first sentence and last sentence there's like five other sentences once a student most students probably wasted so much time reading every single sentence when if you just read the last sentence and knew the y intercept was the thing that's being targeted and you read the first sentence and it lets you know plus eight was the y intercept you're done you can move on you're not wasting any amount of time so please skip to the last sentence of a math word problem and sometimes this might not work so in that case just you know read every single sentence of the word problem and piece it out write down the important information and make the connections you need and solve the problem and get it right but a lot of times reading that that last sentence is gonna you know facilitate you getting that problem correct much faster i pick up your pencil is something that's like a power move on the st math section like college versus you do that they're like yo we need you to make the st math problems for us not picking up your pencil basically means your mental math abilities are at a level where you just don't need to write anything down now this obviously doesn't apply for every single problem personally my mental math abilities are pretty high up and i can solve a lot of st math non-cal problems without picking up my pencil <laughs> But sometimes, like, if I need to write down something just to make it clear, I'm going to. I'm not getting any points by not picking up my pencil. I mean, yeah, that's cool for me, but no one actually cares. At the end of the day, they care if you get the problem correct. So if you need to write even one thing down, write it down. Don't have that ego where, like, nah, I'm about to do anything with my head because I'm Albert Einstein. You don't need to do that. But a lot of problems you can solve without picking up your pencil. And you're going to realize that as you practice more and more and more. I know in my math course, I talk about it a lot, and I teach you exactly how to use mental math to solve these problems quick. But if you're not at that level, it's fine because you will be able to get to that level, you know, by practicing. Seeing, uh, watching videos and just doing practice tests over and over again. You can also exactly use my course to get to that level and then use my course to sharpen your mental math even more and then become like a math juggernaut. Another thing is not picking up your pencil, like I said, it's a power move, so it helps with confidence. And confidence is a big thing on the, on the SAT that's kind of underestimated because a lot of students they struggle with SAT because they're nervous and they're like, dang, it's a big exam. Like, if I fail, my life is over when that's not true. But you know, having that confidence going to that exam confident will help you a lot when it comes to getting the questions correct and actually believing in your answer and not second guessing yourself, not making you make silly mistakes and repeat problems check the same you know work over and over again to make sure you're right confidence helps on the SAT for any exam for that matter you want to have exam confidence now for statistic questions this is obviously a topic that is not touched on heavily by a lot of SAT educators but for statistic questions you want to eliminate anything that gives off certainty a lot of times you'll be faced with data based questions where you're given a data set or you get some sort of relationship with a graph and you have to make a conclusion based on the graph they give you four choices three or at least two of the choices are going to have some type of wording that signifies certainty like low 
low stress causes high performance in soccer, right? The word causes is a trigger word that means wrong because in statistics, nothing is 100% cause and effect. It's all correlational, right? So a better wording would be low stress seems to lead to higher performance in soccer because that's not certain, but that's something that you can see based on like a correlation. So stuff that says causes or gives off like certainty, eliminate those choices right away. You have to read the entire sentence. Just to find that word causes, boom, eliminate the choice. This will help you a lot when it comes to statistic questions because a lot of students miss that. They don't really study that. They don't really, they've kind of neglected, they don't care about it. But this one trick is going to help you get like way more statistic questions right. I can't say the word. Way more statistic questions right. So these are four techniques to use to score above a 700 in math. If you made it to this part of the video, I want you to comment down any score above 700 and then you're going to get that math section score guaranteed as long as you study. Maybe you use my course too. So thank you all for watching. Comment down below that score above 700. Hopefully you guys get it. I know you will. Thank you all for watching. Peace.